So can we, do you think that your program or maybe the other program you're talking about, I mean, can it kind of get summed up into really what you're doing is like calorie tracking? You just want to make sure so. that you're only trying to intake a certain amount of calories per day. You just have a different way of going about it. Like you're utilizing mm -hmm. that 160 calorie shake as a great meal replacement because it's low in calorie. And then you're still careful about what you eat at lunch and dinner mm -hmm. so that you don't overdo it on calories. Yeah. I think that's, you know, if you go back to beginning a time before lap band surgeries and gastric bypass, and I'm not saying that that's not good for some people because some people need that. And, you know, and when I had it done, it was the first thing that jump started me and it worked for me. It's worked for a lot of my friends, but I think you have to find what works for you. And for me, it quit working because I didn't like all the constraints that came with it. And I honestly didn't like being sick. We wanted a way that agents could hone their craft and be a part of a larger community, get the resources they need and information they need to know. We cover relevant topics in the industry that will help you close more sales. We talk to top producers and industry leaders to share knowledge and best practices from around the country. So if you want to make more sales, then listen up because we're dropping gold. Hey guys, I'm so excited about today's podcast. We have the woman, the myth, the legend, Galen Hendricks with us today, yes. talking about a subject that currently is very near and dear to my heart. And it seems that it's been an incredible journey that Galen's been on, um, you know, over the past few months now. And so we're going to talk about it because um, Galen, first of all, thanks for being on the program today. How are you? My absolute pleasure. Fantastic. I feel great. I mean, you know, I survived COVID. Well, I guess we're still in COVID. So I'm surviving COVID. There That's you. what I'm going to start saying. Well you know, said. my new hashtag 2021 is going to be fun. Yeah, I love it. I, and, and I think, you know, the cool thing is there's going to be at least a couple of events where we get to see each other in person this year. And I'm really Real soon. About that Real soon. End of this month will be the first one. So, um, the reason, though, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to be talking about our health. Uh, really, one of the things that hit me that I've, I've been in the past month, I've been having some bouts with health issues due to my stomach. Um, if I'm being honest with everybody, since COVID hit and even a little bit prior to COVID, I just stopped caring about what I was taking in. I think I got really focused on and, and this happens. I get real focused on business. I get real focused on family. I get real focused on other things and health always takes a back seat. A lot of times we take it for granted, but when I get taken down, especially on days where I need to be working and I need to be busy, um, that's where it kind of hits you the most. And, mm -hmm. and that's what happened to me. I had an epiphany. I'm just like, you know what? I'm so disciplined in so many aspects of my life when it comes to my money, my family, my business, why not my health when yeah. without it, everything else, all those other things, they're going to, they're going to struggle. They're going to, they're going to get hurt by that mm -hmm. impact of my health. So, yeah. you know, it really hit me that I was like, I need to focus on getting healthy. I need to take that discipline that I have in all these other aspects, focus it on health, get better, make better food choices, be more active. And, um, you know, one of, one of the people who actually, and I, I bring him up all the time, Cody Askins always inspires me because every single day he's posting on his Instagram of him heading to the gym and doing his mm -hmm. workout his wife that is amazing and and that's what i was like you know what i can do at least half of that <laughs> at least you know i need to and uh and then when i posted about that in the senior sales coach group um i got a lot of feedback a lot of responses i think this is something near and dear to a lot of people and and it so is. today i want to and talk i think to it's even i think it's even more important now in covid because yes. people are eating and drinking and nursing their wounds. But I do want to say something about what you said really quickly. Sure. You're a giving person. And that's what I think I am. Um, you know, and when you're a giving person, you will do anything and everything you can for others. And you put yourself on the back burner. And I have been guilty of that my entire life. Um, and I think one of the things that we have a lot in common already, but I, I know that about you. I know your family is first. I know your business is right there by it. 
and all the agents that you work with, you take incredibly good care of. So, you know, it's easy to beat up on ourselves right now because I think it's really easy to go dark than it is light. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that you're going down the right road now. You, you had like a wake up call. I had the same thing. And I think when you have that wake up call, for me, it's really God saying, I want you to take better care of yourself. And I'm a very spiritual person. And, you know, I heard that. And fortunately for me, like with you, uh, I had two people that are close to me that were taking care of themselves, my son and daughter-in-law and trying to lose weight. And then I have my business partner, Taylor, who was running seven and a half miles a day, which guys, that's not ever going to happen for this gal. <laughs> um, I did high impact aerobics in the eighties and I can beat anybody in the eighties, but I cannot beat anybody today running seven and a half miles. <laughs> But I appreciate you having me on to talk about this journey. You know, these, these are hard things to talk about uh, because I think for me, you know, I had lost um, 109 pounds from 2007 to about 2009. And then I had a hysterectomy um, and I was still losing, but not at the rate I was prior to the hysterectomy. And the lap band started causing me what I would call some minor complications. I found out that I could not do what I was originally doing. Of course, my daughter-in-law says, well, it's because you started drinking champagne and Diet Coke. And, you know, they told you no carbonation. And I'm like, well, tell me about it. it doesn't break the rules, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but it was really more than that. I just wasn't feeling good. And so something was not right. I just didn't know what it was. And then Eric, as you know, because you've been on a journey with me for a long time in 2013, I had to uh, do something in our business. Um, you know, it's always hard to terminate relationships, but we had to terminate somebody and we terminated this person because it was just in the best interest of our business. Yeah. Uh, but then it turned into mass chaos and we got through it. And while sometimes it seemed grim and dim, um, my faith never wavered and God showed up in a big way and uh, took care of it and rewarded us. And, you know, and all parties involved, just the way that we always wanted it to happen. And so that worked out great. And then one day I woke up um, and I was like, you know, okay, God, you showed up in a big way. Now I need to take care of some things with me. And cause I was looking at pictures, you and I had done a podcast, uh, the first friends one. And when you sent it to me, I looked at it and I go, Eric, can you shave half of my backside <laughs> off? And you couldn't, and you didn't. And I'm looking at that every day going, ah. That was the time because that's the time that we were in person together. You actually mm -hmm. had come down to visit the call yep. center. We were in person. Together. Actually, it was a year ago this month. Yeah. Uh, just the end of January because it popped up in my memories. Oh, that's right. Facebook. And so uh, I had, uh, and I'm, and I'm going to talk about this on my eight percent virtual uh, preview that I'm going to do for eight percent nation, but. What happened was, is I started thinking about, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a keynote speaker on 8% Nation. I, I don't want to look like that. I'm going to be at Medicare Guru's Mastermind. I can't look like that. And then I had this massive cruise coming up that I, you know, we'd gotten out of that chaos. And I was like, oh, I want to take my family somewhere great. And I want to spend a little more money. So it's extra special so we can celebrate all this. And then COVID started and then they started going, well, we don't know if we can go on that cruise. We're not going to get stranded out on that cruise. And then I started feeling deflated and defeated. And, you know, I just saw myself kind of sinking. And then I was like, well, there's not anything I can do because they haven't canceled the cruise yet. And I don't want to lose all that money. So they ended up canceling the cruise and we went to Bow Harbor and we had a wonderful time. But then while we were in Bow Harbor, we were walking into restaurants in South Florida that I have never been able to get into because they're always so busy. Yeah. And I'm watching just our family in these restaurants. 
and maybe one person at a bar and maybe one person here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this COVID thing's for real. I don't know if this is going to go away in 30 days. And we come back home and I start thinking about my grocery list and I am like, oh my gosh, all I'm going to do, this is going to be like the famous ice days in Texas because we don't get snow, we get ice. I'm going to end up making all these rich, comforting, southern fried Mexican meals because that's what I specialize in. And I'm going to drink a ton of red wine and white wine because I'm happy, you know. Then that happiness started turning. Oh my gosh, this is more serious. And so I went down the journey that my daughter-in-law was going on and I went to this doctor and, you know, and this is not something I talk about all the time because you have to be careful, especially when people follow you and, you know, you don't want to give them bad advice, wrong advice, because everybody has different conditions. But I got under a doctor's care Uh, was advised that I needed to take a medication to jumpstart my metabolism. Um, I did that. And then I shortly went to my gynecologist, who I've known forever. We're really good friends. And she said, um, you know, she goes, I think you need to be on some serious supplements. I, I think you need some vitamin D. You need some vitamin K. You're already scared to death about immunity because I had really great immunity. Yeah. Um, because I was flying everywhere. So, I mean, I could be around snotty nose kids all day and never get a thing, but I did get COVID, but you know, I got it because my grandkids were exposed, but they never had a symptom. And I fortunately, by that time had lost about 55 pounds when I got COVID and I just, I had a very mild case of it. Um, very, very blessed. Uh, I had a bad headache one day. You know, I had uh, the sinus thing one day and one day I was just really tired. Let me ask you a um, question then, really uh-huh. quick, because yeah. as you were already in the middle of your weight loss journey at that point, that mm-hmm. means you were already taking these vitamins. So you're mm-hmm. one of the things I've heard is that the people who seem to have more complications with COVID are those who are pretty deficient in vitamin D. So that right there, at least for those who are listening, that vitamin D is such a important thing, especially when it mm-hmm. comes to combating with COVID. Um, not to say it's going to be a cure all or anything, but look at you, you know, you were already on this journey, you were getting yep. healthier, but you made sure that your supplement intake was pretty high. As a result, you you didn't really have that many issues for So that's an interesting point you bring up because my daughter in law at the time was not taken. I don't think any supplements, I think she might have been taking a multivitamin. But she asked me, she says, what all are you taking? And I said, Well, you're gonna die because I look like vitamin man. Literally, I have a multivitamin that has no filler in it. I literally take a a drop uh, three times a day that is, um, it's called D2K3, I think, or D3K2. All of this can be bought on Amazon. Um, And I take a thyroid support drop uh, just to keep my metabolism going. Um, I take, this is another great one that y'all all need to think about because When older people, and yes, I'm 57, but I'm talking much older people. When much older people get COVID, it's because they don't have enough vitamin C or zinc. So now I take a vitamin C and zinc supplement. I'm now taking a bruise supplement because I'm on hormone therapy. It's the only medication I'm on. And I've been on it since 2009. And it's because it's dealing with your endocrine system, which also deals with your metabolic system because it's connected to your thyroid. You know, it's that old song, you know, your hip bones connected to your whatever, but the liver is what operates your whole body. Most people think it's the heart, but it's the liver. And so when you're taking all these supplements, what it's doing is cleansing the liver. And so the liver is functioning better. And one of the tests that my gynecologist is going to do on me, because she got me started on all these supplements is she says, when I come back in, in April, she's going to be able to run this test and she's going to be able to show me that my liver is operating probably at half the speed more than it was before I got on all these supplements. And so I take a B12 chewable every day. 
I, and I also take uh, two chewable probiotics every day. And so you were talking about stomach issues earlier. So what I found out is I, when I first got started on this, I was having stomach issues and never had stomach issues before. And, you know, before we jumped on, I told you about how I was like, intermittent fasting does not work. It's ridiculous. I'm blah, 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 blah. Well, it's because I was not going the full length of time that you needed to go from night to the next day. And I am not a breakfast person, but if you look at all the diet guides and guys, I am telling you, this is not me giving you medical advice. So if you go down my road and things don't work out, then you blame yourself. Do not blame me. Um, so I'm going to put a disclaimer running Later. down at the bottom. This is not medical advice. Yes. We are not doctors. No, um, I'm a doctor of the heart is what I tell people. But you know what, what I did is I was like, you know, for breakfast, I don't really like any breakfast foods. You know, the breakfast foods I do like are incredibly fattening. Like I like yogurt with uh, uh, granola and honey. Are you talking about though, because, okay, let, let, we're talking about yogurts. You have like the, the new yogurts that are out there that are all sugarized and everything. And then you have your like, to me, I think it's pretty nasty tasting. The, just the, the Greek yogurt, right? The, the plain Greek yogurt that just has... That's stuff you mix and stuff. That's not stuff you eat. (laughs) You know, that's like a sour cream. You wouldn't sit there and eat sour cream by itself. And if you are, then we have to have another conversation another day. But, you know, I literally liked all the, what I call dinner foods for breakfast. You know, I liked this. I'm, I'm Texan, as you can tell by the accent. I, I loved, you know, the sausage and the biscuits and the gravy and the bacon, you know, and all the stuff that was not good. So I was like, you know, I don't really care for breakfast. So I'm just going to eliminate that breakfast because one thing I'm not going to give up. And I told my husband this, when I decided I was going to go down this journey and I started March 29th of 2020, I told him, I said, I'm not giving up queso. I'm not giving up wine. And I'm not giving up the occasional haagen little mini bar. So I've got to figure out how to lose weight and keep those in. Because what I figured out about myself is that after I would get on one of these journeys, and that's why I brought up drinking champagne and all that stuff after the lap band is I love champagne. And when you're 57, 58, you don't want to give up the luxuries that you finally feel like, A, I can afford. You know, there was a time when I couldn't afford champagne. Yeah. You know, uh, I didn't want to give up Mexican food. It's, it's my most favorite thing in the universe. As you know, I come to Arizona, I go to the mission. That's right. So, you know, I literally decided I needed to give up breakfast in order to be able to have the things I loved. And I have started doing, which I have one here because I just finished it. So I drink these Premier Shakes. I also drink Fair Life. And both of these can be bought at Costco, Sam's. You can order them on Amazon. But what's cool about the Premier Shakes is when I had lap band surgery, these were the only shakes that tasted good. All the others tasted terrible. But now during COVID, I'm busier than ever, which just blows my mind because, you know, I'm helping so many agents now get on the phone and call their books of business and cross sell. So this works out great for me at lunch. And when I was at the office, I always felt the need to go to lunch with a staff member or team. And, you know, we ate a big lunch and then I would come home, have to cook dinner, eat a big dinner. And then I was thinking I was intermittent fasting because I was done eating at 730. But then by the time I ate that meal at lunch at 1130, you know, I'm putting in twice the calories I was eating when um, I had my lap band surgery. Yes. So this has actually been a better journey for me than the lap band journey because I'm actually able now because I had my lap band deflated. I was going to have it removed but then this thing COVID happened and you couldn't have any elective surgeries done. Yeah. So now it's just deflated and it's in my body. It doesn't work. It doesn't do anything, but it's not causing me any complications either. 
And so what's cool about these premier shakes is they're 160 calories, but you're getting 30 grams of protein. And it's rare to find a shake five years ago that had 160 calories with 30 grams of protein. Now there's more on the market. There's core power, there's fair life, there's the premier and they, they have all these different kinds of flavors. Plus with the premier shakes, you know, you can mix them with coffee and you can make like a caramel macchiato thing. Um, and you're getting 160 calories plus 30 grams of protein. So, you know, that's healthy for the body and they're, they're satisfying. Now, what I've told a lot of people who have asked me about this weight loss um, is that it's hard the first two weeks because you're eliminating all that rich food that you've eaten for breakfast and lunch. And if you're like me, you normally cook a breakfast for your husband on Saturday or Sunday morning, and he wants you to eat with him. So you've got to figure out how you're going to trade out. So it's in the beginning, when your partner partner helps with doing it, right? Mm-hmm. So, because sometimes people are going to have to go on this journey alone. And sometimes that's what stops them from taking that first step is because they might have a spouse who isn't in need of doing that. And so you're just kind of, or they're have- in need and they hate shakes yeah. or they're in need and they're mad that you're losing and they're not, but they're still eating a double meat, double cheeseburger and you're eating 160 calories. Yeah. So what, what happened was, is I found out that when I eliminated breakfast and I had this shake at lunch and I was on all these supplements and then my metabolism started working, I found out that, you know, the scale started moving faster and I hate to admit it, but I wasn't doing any exercise because I was on one zoom after another. I mean, my husband clocked it in one week. I was doing eight Zooms a day for five days and, you know, just hour to hour to hour to hour. And I would literally tell somebody, Hey, I need to go grab my shake because I'm starving. Yeah. Um, But now like yesterday, uh, the day went by, I forgot my shake and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't drink shake. And then last night we ordered pizza because my sister was coming over And I had one small piece of pizza and my husband goes, are you going to eat anything else? I said, just leave my plate there. I may be hungry in a minute, but you know, I got it from the table. I wasn't hungry because my stomach is shrunk. So what, what really transpired was, is Dan and I, I was getting stir crazy because as you know, I travel a ton Yeah. and I woke up on a, I think it was a, yeah, it was a Friday morning. And I said, I want to go to Yellowstone. I said, I love the show Yellowstone. I want to go see where it's filmed and I want to see Yellowstone. I've never seen it in the summer. I've always seen it in the winter. He goes, when do you want to go? And I said, day after tomorrow. And he goes, what? I go, I've already got tickets booked and I'm ready to go. So we went and this was the journey from H-E-L-L. I mean, I thought Dan was going to kill me because we were doing so much driving. We had a ton of fun. Like I told 8% Nation, we had the biggest argument of our entire married life on that trip because, you know, he's the Eagle Scout and I'm Siri. Well, we get in Yellowstone, Siri doesn't work anymore. And he's like, where the heck are we? And I'm like, well, I don't know. You're the Eagle Scout. Did you bring a map? No, because you're giving me directions. Well, it turned into mass freaking chaos. Not kidding. But. We get out, we take a picture when we were coming through Darby because I wanted to see where Yellowstone was filmed. And we get to the hotel that night and I'm just kind of going through Facebook and memories were popping up. And I saw this picture he took of me at the Yellowstone place where the show Yellowstone was filmed. And um, I'm like, I need to look at a picture of me from a year ago. Because I can kind of carry my weight pretty well distributed. Like I tell everybody, I have to lose 60 pounds for anybody goes, oh, you're losing weight, you know. The same way. Yeah. And so anyway, it was getting kind of frustrating because, you know, people weren't really noticing until I lost like 40 pounds. Well, we were on this trip and I think I'd hit like right around 35 pounds. And I put it up next to that picture of Taylor and I at Manhattan Live. And I showed it to Dan that night and he goes, wow, 
that's huge. So I posted it so I would have accountability. And then I wake up the next morning and I got like 130 alerts and I'm like, what the heck? Are they looking at something on Queen of the Bundle? Because you know how Facebook works. Yeah. So I click on it and it's all on that weight picture that I did. And so I was like, you know, I said, this, this is good. And so I came back home and I was even more determined than ever. And I knew we had 8% nation coming up and, you know, I wanted to look good for that. And um, I had so many people coming up going, man, you've dropped a lot of weight. I can't believe how much weight you've dropped. And, you know, and I looked up one day and I was wearing size 16 W pants, which my friend later told me, cause I put, I, I had gone down four sizes. She goes, a 16 W is really an 18. So you've gone down six sizes. And I was like, Oh, are you sure? She goes, absolutely. So I look it up and I'm like, well, crap, I was really wearing an 18 and not a 16. So that was depressing. But what I ended up finding out is that, cause now I'm in the 12 and I'm at the lowest weight since I've been 24 years of age. That's wild. And I'm happy as far as clothes are concerned. You know, it's, this is an, this is a hilarious story and I would not advise this for your marriages. I'm just going to tell you this. So I had bought all these clothes last year in the fall thinking these are going to look so great in January and February. So I'm cleaning out my closet. I'm trying all this on and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be able to wear that. I wasn't able to wear that when I bought that. It was so tight. I put it on and it looks like a dress. <laughs> that was too so big. brand new clothes. I mean, on one hand, you're like, yeah. And the other hand, you're like, oh my God, how is that? my husband's going to kill me? So I'm dragging out four big crates of clothes. And he goes, where did all these come from? And I go in my closet and he goes, are you done? Well, I didn't have the courage to tell him. I still have two more racks of shirts to do and another rack of dresses and jackets. And I hadn't even done my chest of drawers yet. So I'm going to have to probably sneak those out. But, you know, it's been um, so encouraging having all the people on Facebook um, be so nice. My sister goes, do you realize the last post you did, you have like 500 something people liking or commenting. And I was like, 500. She goes, well, it's 480 or something. It's close enough to 500. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so sweet. And I went and looked at it and, you know, and, you know, I know Rebecca Davis and a lot of those women and, you know, it, they've just been so encouraging and so sweet and you've been awfully nice as well. And, you know, I just feel really good. And, um, somebody asked me the other day, you know, are you afraid of giving all those clothes away? And I said, you know, I've done it before and I bought new clothes. So no, I'm not obviously afraid or I wouldn't have 16 buckets going out the door, but this time's different because I don't feel deprived. And that's one of the things that I would share with everybody, you know, don't go on a program where you feel like you are going to be able to lose the weight. And, and I see a lot of people that do keto that way. They lose all that weight. And then as soon as they get off of it, it comes right back on and plus 20 pounds. Yeah. And I've done a lot of research on that um, through this journey because I don't want to gain the weight back. And somebody asked me the other day, what's different about this than any other program I've been on? Cause I've been dieting my entire life. I swear I came out of the womb at eight pounds, eight ounces overweight, <laughs> but you know, in the, in my teens and into my early twenties, my mother swore I had an eating disorder and looking back on it, I think she was probably right because, you know, I'd done diet pills and I'd done fluid pills, everything everybody did in the eighties. And I was thin and I was doing aerobics and I was teaching aerobics and I was dancing every week. And I was, you know, bowling what you do when you do single, but when you get married and your life changes and I wouldn't trade that time for all the tea in China. Cause I was told I wouldn't have a child. So I had one and, you know, that became my focus. And so, you know, you're at ball games and you're eating food that's not healthy. And, and one day you just wake up and you're just totally out of shape and you feel so lost. I mean, I remember going to an overeaters anonymous group 
And the guy said, literally, if you work this many hours, stand up. And, you know, I was excited. And then he goes, if you work 60 hours a week, stand up. I stood up and the guy goes, you're the only one standing. And I go, what does this have to do with food? And he goes, oh, no, this is a Workaholics Anonymous class. And I go, oh, well, I excel in this class. He goes, no, you're kind of the problem. And I go, okay, well, I need to work. But can you tell me where the Overeaters Anonymous class is? So I went in there and tried that program. You know, I've tried everything, but I will say this program for me, I don't, I'm not going to give a wrong signal that it's easy but it's easier than anything else I've ever done because it goes along with my work schedule. It works really well. You know, if I'm out entertaining agents or with an insurance company, it's usually in the evening. So doing what I'm doing for breakfast and lunch works. And then when I go to dinner with them in the evening, I can still eat. I can still be part of the social aspect, but if I eat at lunch, I just, I switch it. You know, I have a shake for dinner at night or I eat really light at dinner and, you know, and I don't feel deprived. Like I said, you just get to this age and you feel like, you know, I've worked hard to be able to have a glass of wine when I want one. And I've, and if I want to have chips and queso, I want to have chips and queso because what I don't want to do is lose all this weight and then go and just be miserable too, because, you know, food, you and I've talked about this. I mean, I want, I like to learn to cook other types of food. And, you know, I told you last time you and I were together, I want to make the food where you come from, your people come from. And, you know, and not all of that food is fattening. It's flavorful and it's healthy. And you can do the same thing with Mexican food. You know, like I make, I would put my Mexican, my carne guisada up against any Mexican's carne guisada, because I think I am Mexican on the inside. You You know, I should have been born that way, but I don't have the skin type, but you know, I will tell you that you can make those dishes healthy. So can we, do you think that your program or maybe the other program you're talking about, I mean, can it kind of get summed up into really what you're doing is like calorie tracking. You just want to make sure that you're only trying to intake a certain amount of calories per day. You just have a different way of going about it. Like you're utilizing Mm -hmm. that 160 calorie shake as a great meal replacement because it's low in calorie. And then you're still careful about what you eat at lunch and dinner Mm -hmm. so that you don't overdo it on calories. Yeah. I think that's, you know, if you go back to beginning a time before lap band surgeries and gastric bypass, and I'm not saying that that's not good for some people because some people need that. And, you know, and when I had it done, it was the first thing that jump started me and it worked for me. It's worked for a lot of my friends, but I think you have to find what works for you. And for me, it quit working because I didn't like all the constraints that came with it. And I honestly didn't like being sick. You know, when you have to eat bite-sized pieces and you know me, I'm going a hundred miles a minute, cutting my meat up into little bitty pencil erasers. I just don't have time for it. And it it got very frustrating and I got tired of living on soups because that's the only thing that would work. But, you know, there are some things that people have to do to jumpstart their weight loss. For me, this actually worked. Get a little more light there. It actually worked. And and I think the reason it worked just to be a hundred percent blunt is because I didn't give up the foods I really, really love. And, and I feel satisfied and I was very passionate about that. I mean, I was laying down the law to my husband, like he was going to be doing this. You know, I was like, I am not giving this up. Yeah. Um, but I think also, you know, some people see it as bragging when you put it out on Facebook for mm-hmm. me, it's about being accountable. Number one, because I look at my memories every day. And number two, I want to encourage somebody, you know, I always, I I love the Maya Angelou uh, quote. She said, some people are going to remember what you said. Some people are going to remember what you did, but all people are going to remember how you made them feel. And that is truly what I inspire to do with people, you know, my mom used to tell me this and I never believed it, but she goes, you're going to turn a certain age one day and your filter's going to go away 
and you're just going to say what you think and your kids are going to be mad at you and your husband's going to think you turned into, you know, who knows what. But she says, you're going to get to that point to where you just want to love people. And I think that's where I'm at in my life and in my journey. You know, I try to bring the joy where I'm at. Some people love me more than others. You know, that's normal. But um, I've just had a ton of fun in 2020. You know, other than the being sad of not being able to travel, I miss my insurance conventions. I miss my insurance peeps. You know, I hit a little road of depression in July and August, which I haven't been depressed like that since I was 17 years old. And I lost a boyfriend um, that I had in high school. But, you know, I knew I didn't want to go back down that road. So I did what all girls do that are Galen. And I went to counseling and (laughs) I got it fixed again. Uh, But, you know, I'm in just, I'm probably in one of the better places in my life than I've been in a really, really long time. Um, I, I just, I feel more confident, you know, and I don't think God's done with me. I think he's going to use me and somebody else's life. You know, I'm doing uh, women in insurance niches with Rebecca Davis and Faye Horton. Uh, Cody Askins told me a year ago that out of all these insurance agents, 52% of them that are licensed are female, but only 1% of them are in the category I am in. Wow. And that's, that's been the story of my life, right? I mean, I used to be the youngest, not that anymore, but I'm still female. Um, and you know, that's, that's kind of sad, but you know, man, I've been, I've been so supportive. First of all, I got to thank you. Me? Uh, yeah, you have been such an inspiration for me the last couple of years, especially when it comes to Facebook. I've said it before. You're one of the best interviewers, although this conversation you haven't even talked, I've just taken over. Uh, so I need to interview you one day, but, um, I know you're not surprised, but we haven't talked in like a month and a half or so. So, you know, catching up, but you know, I guess Dan's right. I could talk to a wall and make it a friend, (laughs) but you know, I do. I, I love talking with you. You, you make interviewing fun. Thank you. You know, you, you're so good at it. You're calm. Um, you just bring a demeanor that puts me in this very comfortable position. You know, I've been interviewed a lot this last year and some people, you know, they may be nervous, um, but you don't. And so thank you for that. And I'm going to shut up. And now if you have a question, you can ask me. Well, I think, okay. I, I, think I, I overcame all the objections. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, so to wrap up the podcast, there's one thing that I want to ask because you're, you're already a hustler as it is, right? Regardless of what weight you were at, you're always on the go. You're always making things happen, moving and shaking. Um, what would you say though, from a mental standpoint, what benefits have you seen? Has it increased anything for you business-wise being in healthier shape than when you were not? So, you know, I love being creative, but I find my creative side now in overdrive. Uh, There's so many things I want to do. I'm getting ready to launch the podcast accomplished, which I'm going to get to interview you on. Um, I'm in the process of writing the book accomplished. Um, I'm going to talk about, you know, some hard things. I'm going to talk about what I've been through as a woman in this business. I'm going to talk about the men that have supported me and have been so great for me. You know, early on in my career, women were not supportive. Um, and it was heartbreaking, you know, it was very cutthroat and men encouraged me and men supported me. And, you know, they saw something in me I didn't even see in myself. And so that's been exciting. Um, you know, I think the other thing is I'm starting to do more of the talking about when we, uh, filed the lawsuit against the government and one, uh, for hospital indemnities still be a viable alternative to Obamacare. I'm getting interviewed more and more about that now, especially with the talk of yeah. Biden moving short-term medical out of the equation, um, you know, a lot of people just didn't understand what those policies did, especially the government. But I'll tell you something that's really happened to me that I've noticed. 
you know, I was struggling a little bit with mental clarity. Um, and my doctor, when I went to her last April, told me that that had to do with menopause. And, you know, since I had a hysterectomy in 2009, you know, I didn't really know when I was going through menopause because they put you on hormones and you don't, they don't really give you a book that says, here's what you can expect. Right. So, um, what happened was, is I would be like, I don't remember the name of that recipe I want, you know, just little things. So it starts to scare you. Right. Cause they've got yeah. all these movies about early Alzheimer's on set and you're like, Oh, yeah. So, but what's happened since I've been on all these supplements, I haven't noticed that at all. Um, I'm, I'm pretty quick. My husband said, you just Google it. And I said, no, I don't. I remember it. And so that's been helpful. Also, I think the other thing is I've noticed uh, my skin clearing up. You know, that's been a big thing. Um, and, you know, so I do think that I've seen lots of improvements in that area. And, I, and I'm glad my doctors suggested the supplements yeah. because I, I've just noticed a lot of changes with them and I just feel better. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you being on here today and, you know, telling people about your, your story, your journey, because there's a lot of, now there are a lot of ladies that are in the insurance business who know who you are and follow mm -hmm. you and you've, you've been inspiring them. So I just kind of wanted to get down a little bit more into the nuts and bolts of it so that people can be, um, at least have an idea of what you had to do to get to where you're at, because everybody will tell you it's not easy and anybody who mm -hmm. tells you otherwise is lying, mm -hmm. but it's important that at least they hear the truth from you and, and also the truth about how it's not easy, but this is how yeah. you did it so that they yeah. can try to implement it if they want. Well, and March 29th will be a year. So my goal is to lose 10 more pounds by March 29th. I'd said it March 1st, but that's another thing I will say to all of you watching, you know, don't put goals on yourself that are, too hard to reach. You know, when I first started this, I just didn't want to gain any more weight. And I also think that was a contributing factor, you know, just taking off the pressure about losing any weight, but just being able not to gain any. And I think that's why when we went to uh, Yellowstone and I saw that picture, I was kind of shocked. I was like, Oh, I'm actually losing weight. And I was weighing, I was doing all the things because when you're under a doctor's care, you have to do progress reports. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I just didn't want to gain anymore. That's what I was freaked out about. And, you know, I think we all hit those moments where we get freaked out. You know, you've got a kid, Eric, and, you know, when you start having stomach issues and, you know, for me, it's very personal because I lost my dad so young. I lost my dad when he was 52. Yeah. And so that's always put a fear in me. You know, once I got my son graduated from high school, I kind of felt like the pressure was off. I wanted to always be there to get him through high school because my dad did not get my sister through high school. So that was a goal of mine. And then my goal became to just get him through college. And then my goal was to make sure he was married and that he was happy. And so, you know, all of those goals worked. Yeah. You know, he graduated high school, he graduated college, he's got a great family and he's happy. So I accomplished that. And so now I'm kind of just like in this, you know, I just want to be here for my grandkids moment. And so that's probably what's affecting you. You know, I know how much you love your little boy. And I know all of you that are watching how much you love your families. You know, that's the best thing about being in this insurance business is the connection that we all have knowing about each other's families and watching how hard you work to provide for those families. That, that's the thing that really warms my heart. Good. That's awesome. Well, again, I do appreciate your time. I think that there's a lot of valuable content in this podcast that people can take away with them. And uh, I do really look forward to seeing you again in February because I was telling Jessica, my wife, that um, I just that I need to be around people. That's what gives me my energy. I'm yeah. extroverted. So I need to be around people. Yeah, we missed you at 8% Nation. So it's going to be fun at what I call MGM. MGM. And That's we're going to bring a great message to MGM. I've been working on it. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the lawsuit. We're going to talk a little bit about how to be positive in a negative environment. And so we're going to have a lot of fun at 8% Nation. So I mean, not 8% Nation, MGM. MGM. So, but we're going to have fun at 8% Nation too. It's in July. So. Yeah.
Yeah, it'll sure. be sizzling here, by the way, folks. So bring your skinny bikinis. <laughs> it's gonna be hot, but awesome. it'll be fun. We have air it conditioning will. here in Texas. It well, will. again, thanks so much, and you know, I, I know that we'll we'll definitely be doing this again for a completely different topic. That's the beauty about us having so much in common that we could talk about a variety of things. So, um, thanks again so much. I get to interview you next time. I'm gonna send you the questions. There you go. So, I don't know if your audience knows what accomplished is gonna be, but. What's going to happen is, is I'm going to have the same three questions for every single guest. And then there'll be two other questions. There'll be a question that the audience gets to submit to me. And then there'll be a question that I ask, usually something I know about that person that the listening audience doesn't know mm -hmm. that they're going to get to talk about. And we're going to have not just insurance people on accomplish. We're going to have people from all walks of life because- I've had, I've been inspired by so many different people in different industries. And I want to share that with everybody else. So mm -hmm. we're hoping to get it started in March. So you guys be ready and check me out on queen of the bundle. We'll see you around. Hey, thanks for watching the podcast. If you like the content, please hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you can get notified when more new content comes out. We'll see you on the next one.